on the wrist at the moment is the Zenit Chronomaster Sport and I think this is the Rolex Daytona alternative. To the watch vlog at Chisholm Hunter. We're finally back out and about. My name is Harrison, as always. And to be honest, guys, I've been looking for a Rolex Daytona for a while. You'll know this. I quite like the white dial with a steel bezel, but there's a problem with Rolex Daytonas. It's not the watch, it's that you can't get them. And the reason for this, guys, is that Rolex simply can't fulfill the demand of their watches. Rolex watches are incredible by nature, but they just can't produce enough of them. And that's why the waiting lists are so long and that's why the residuals go up in value. So for me at the moment, it's I just can't pay that little bit extra. I don't have that money to get a Rolex on the pre-owned market. But this, this is nice. Let's get to the specs then. So the specs of this watch, this comes in at 41 millimeters in diameter. Pretty perfect for my wrists. I have 6.5 inch wrists. So this sits really, really nicely for me. And then you get to the thickness and it has a 13.6 millimeter thickness. Now, this is an interesting one. I actually prefer slimmer watches. And the reason that I prefer slimmer watches is they sit that little bit closer to the wrist. In my lifestyle, as you can see, we're on the Chisholm Hunter watch vlog, we're out and about in the mountains. And when a watch sits higher up off the wrist, I feel like I'm more likely to scratch it or dent it. It's just a personal preference, but I do prefer slimmer watches. This model has sapphire crystal glass and it also has anti-reflective coating on both sides. Now, Drew actually pointed this out a little bit earlier. It has a really, really nice sheen to it. But what you need to remember is that when it has anti-reflective coating on both sides, the face might scratch that little bit more. But then I suppose you need to think of where you're going to use this watch. When it comes in at the price it does, we'll get onto the price a little bit later, but I probably wouldn't wear this out and about. It's just that little bit too expensive. And also I would probably prefer it on the bracelet. Another little fact about this watch is it has sapphire crystal glass on the underbelly, which reveals the beautiful movement. Now, obviously the Rolex Daytona doesn't have this. It's not bashing the Rolex in any way because that's one of my grail watches. I've always wanted a Rolex, but I do like the fact that you can see into that movement. The strap that I have on this watch at the moment is the NATO. Now, for those of you that know me, they, you know that I tend to go with rubber or NATO. But I have to say, I'm not too big a fan of the color of this strap. It's not the strap itself, it's just the color. Personal preference, I would probably get a black rubber or the bracelet. And actually at the price that this is, I would probably get the bracelet. It would be more of a dressy watch to me, but that's just personal preference. You know, it's funny, I've been wearing this for four days now, this, this Zenith model. And you know, when they released the Skyline model, I, it piqued my interests. I really, really love Zenith movements. And I've said this in a previous review, I'll, I'll link it up here for you, but I honestly think that Zenith movements are some of the best in the watch industry. I've always wanted a chronometer. I've not, not got a chronometer in my collection at the moment. So when I was looking through the Zeniths, this is the one that stood out. And the fact that it's available, and I can't afford it just yet, but it is within reach. With that said, Zenith movements by nature are unbelievably beautiful. They are jaw dropping and the quality is incredible. But because of that, the production of Zeniths is a lot smaller than other watchmakers. And as the Zenith Chronomaster and Skyline and the ranges as a whole grow in popularity, they're getting harder to get. The case on this model is made from stainless steel and so is the bracelet. Obviously I don't have the bracelet on at the moment, but the bracelet is stunning. I have tried that on before. I'm a big fan of stainless steel. I actually prefer it to other metals. Although titanium is that little bit harder, I prefer watches with a bit of weight to them. What initially attracted me to this watch is in part the dial, it is jaw dropping. And then you have the ceramic bezel that's in black, which really pops out that dial. It obviously has a tachymetric scale around it to measure one tenth 
of a second when you're using the chronometer. Let's talk about the complications on the dial for a second. It has a small seconds at nine o'clock, a 60 minute counter at six o'clock, and a 60 second counter at three o'clock. It also has a date window at just past the four o'clock marker, but let's talk about the colors of the subdials because they're stunning. The one on the left at nine o'clock is a beautiful silver color. And then the one at six o'clock is more of a gray, a kind of enamel gray, I would call it. And then at the three o'clock, my personal favorite is a blue subdial. I don't normally go for colored dials. I normally go for neutral colors, but for some reason, and I can't get my head around it, I don't understand it, this really works. Also, something to note which makes this dial even more striking is that each subdial has a sunray pattern running through it, but the main dial, the, the, the white dial, doesn't have that sunray pattern and it makes it contrast really, really nicely, especially in the light. You could literally stare at this watch all day and not get bored. Now, you might have noticed that this is a watch vlog and we are out and about, so let's get the drone up and let's look at this. that I haven't said yet that I was actually going to mention is about the pushers before we got onto the movement. The pushers obviously being a chronometer control, the chronometer, but one thing that they've done that's actually very, very smart is the crown isn't as prominent as the two pushers on the left and the right of the crown. Now, the reason that they've done this is that the crown is the closest thing to your wrist. If you think about it, when it's a circle, it's the furthest thing away, it's the closest to your wrist. So when you bend your wrist, the crown doesn't dig in to your hand and neither do the pushers because the pushers are out to the side. It's that little detail that makes this luxury. It's funny, the colors on this watch are so much more vibrant in person. When I looked at this watch online, the colors look that little bit muted, but when I have it on the wrist, they look so much better. And I think this goes across the industry. Every watch looks better on the wrist. And thankfully for me, Chisholm Hunter are actually authorized retailers for Zenith watches. So head to chismhunter.co.uk and you can find it there. The movement is 6.6 .6 millimeters in thickness. It has 311 components, 35 joules, beats at a frequency of 36,000 VPH and has approximately 60 hours of power. To add to that, on the back is the new star oscillating weight. That is the rotor and it's in the Zenith star. And maybe I'm going mad here, but I do not know another watch brand that have their own logo embedded in the rotor. If you can think of one, let me know in the comments. So what I'm trying to say is if you are in the market for a Rolex Daytona and you maybe can't get your hands on one or maybe you can't stretch that far a bit like me, then this is a fantastic alternative. It's a brand with tons of history. It's a brand that's innovating and doing some really exciting stuff. It's also got some really cool colors and little touches that I really, really like. I could go on about it all day, but I'll save it for another video. But for now, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Chisholm Hunter Watch Vlog. If you've enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. I would really, really appreciate it. I'm going to go enjoy this, this castle. The weather's actually getting a lot better. I might actually get a tan. See you soon.